character because he won for Crazy Horse. But he was yeah. really good in that. Oh, Jeff man, I love that movie. Bridges, my friend. <sighs> Nails it. All right, so True Grit. All right, so we have Miller's Crossing. We have Barton Fink. Oh, Serious Man. That's a sleeper. That's really good. That's a really good movie. There the Man Who no Wasn't There. Ones. Right. There are no bad ones. Oh, man. There my boy, are. Billy Bob Thornton, who I worked with on uh, Jane Mansell's car. He's like my favorite actor. Just working mm-hmm. on set-wise. Just super. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> did I tell you that story? Did I tell you how cool he was? Break it down. Man, all right. I'll just tell a quick story. So I was, I was a, a, a stand-in on a movie called Jane Mansell's Car with Robert Duvall, John Hurt, Ray Stevenson. I was Ray Punisher stand-in. Uh, I... Kevin Bacon, Robert Patrick, huge cast. Nice. Uh, one day, one of the stand-ins was just having a bad day. So I don't know why, but Billy Bob went, he's a director, writer, producer, star of this movie. He goes and mm-hmm. sits down with them for 20 minutes during the off time. Just talks to him about, hey, man, I got I'm, I got my start as a stand-in. I had to lay in a puddle. He's like, but I kept working out. I kept watching. The good thing about so stand-ins are treated horribly on set because you just have to be there. You have to stand there for a half hour at a time without moving. If you're not there right when they call you, second team, if you're not there, you're it's it's not pretty. Uh, that sucks. But if, but if you just be like, if you're like Antonio Banderas from 13th Warrior and you just watch and listen, you will learn a lot about framing and shooting and lighting. And so, but he sat <laughs> nice. down with this dude for 20 minutes and just said, hey, uh, it's tough. But, but okay, I've been on movies where uh, – no one's around and I'm I'm somehow it's me and the director and the first AD and I'm sending two big name actors into a scene and no one else is around. I don't know what happened. Where's the rest of the crew? I don't know where they are. I'm running around. I got these two big actors. This isn't this movie. It's another one. And then the director just yeah. looks at me and goes, that's enough. Get out of here. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a life sucker, dude. And so for him to sit down and do that uh, meant a lot to me in regards of just being, he's cool. So I, uh, I'm a big fan of Billy Bob and Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton's like uh, the coolest guy. R.I.P. God, him. Bill. R.I.P. Just the champion. Now I'm going to pick this one because I don't think enough people talk about it. And I'm going to say the yeah. ballad of Buster Scruggs because Ooh. that was my favorite. I think that was my favorite movie of 2018. It is mm. weird and violent and lyrical and, uh, you know, what's interesting. Everything always goes the wrong way. So it becomes a little bit predictable. It's supposed to be nihilistic, yeah. but you eventually learn, oh, this is going to be bad. But <laughs> it's just a well shot, uh, interesting film. I mean, like, there's, there's a really great scene with Tim Blake Nelson in it. Tom Waits, yes. I believe has a great one. So it's yeah, Tim Blake Nelson's a star of that one, right? Yeah. Well, in the beginning he is. Okay. Yeah, so he has a funky musical it. number, and it's it's a good picture, so that's my fifth one. So you have Raising Arizona, Hudsucker Proxy, Big Lebowski, Old Brother, and True Grit. I have No Country for Old Men, Burn After Reading, Hail Caesar, Inside Lewin Davis, and Ballad of Buster Scruggs. I mean, good luck, brother, you know? I picked, like, I'm telling, Burn After Reading. I can't <laughs> believe they made it, because it, there's some surprises in that movie that you're, you're just, what, what, what? Uh, I'm excited to hear your thoughts, actually, for you to watch it because it's nuts. It's uh, you're, Brad Pitt's crazy in it. So I was doing an article about how much Brad Pitt eats in every movie, yeah. and I had to watch it to get all the calories. And then I was like, "This is amazing!" So I just went and bought it. It's so good. Well, the, well, the... Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt, crazy is always a good look. Man. Twelve Monkeys. Yeah. Right. Period. Stop. Yeah. Oscar nomination. I, people yeah. sleep on Pitt. I really think yeah. they do. Uh, there, listen, it's because he did spend a long time being I'm shirtless romantic drama movie. Not even rom com. Just Legends. you want to see naked. You want you want to stare into my blue eyes. Interview with oh, the did vampire. You know from, did you know that I'm from Kentucky? <laughs> uh, you know, and it's just okay, Brad. I get it. But he's got range. Mm-hmm. He's got talent, and he's never being just Brad Pitt in a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Liam, ne- Liam Neeson is basically just Liam Neeson. Mm-hmm. And like, every, yep. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. I, that's okay. What were no, you no, no. Say? I'm sorry. So I just blur. I blur stuff out. Uh, Moneyball. Watch that's him in Moneyball. He's not Brad Pitt. He's no, the coach. Yes, an incredibly handsome coach. Yeah. Who no one in Major League Baseball has ever looked like in the <laughs> century of baseball. But he's a coach nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> it's just it, I, the dude has range, and I, I think, man, I think you're gonna like it. It's. It's a weird one, and uh, I'm excited to hear your thoughts because uh, we'll do, man. We'll do. Johnny Num, who's a big issues. fan of yours, Norbert. Yeah. Oh, well, thank uh, you, Johnny. Yeah, Johnny he, Norbert loves. He loves Burn After Reading too. So we're oh, like one day we got into a gift battle of just all the gifts of Brad Pitt in that movie, and uh, it was fun. It was like a, the best day. I'm like, yeah, I get to put a Burn After Reading gift of Brad Pitt up. I should just go make more. 
but it uh, sounds really it's it's a weird one, man. <laughs> it's it sounds really good. Just John Malkovich punching Brad Pitt in the face. Like, it's just uh, oh my god! Wow, that is actually something that I need to see. <laughs> I'm gonna hang up from this Skype right now and go. <laughs> Norbert, that's incredible, <laughs> Norbert. Norbert, where are you? <laughs> wow, but, Malkovich has got a hell of a right cross. <laughs> So uh, b- before we get out of here, like, what are what are some of your other like what haven't we touched on with raising Arizona? I mean, actually, wait, what, what, give me your three favorite moments. What are your three favorite moments of raising Arizona? Okay, well, fart. Yes. Where where he just launches hard candy at his son. <sighs> Think fast. <laughs> that is brilliant. That's a triple gag. No, it's a quadruple there, gag. There's a lot. There's a lot yeah. going on. Uh, crawdad brother, who. <gasps> When there was no meat, he ate fowl. <laughs> that, you ate sand? And he didn't say it mean either. He said, you ate, you ate sand? He was genuinely concerned <sighs> that this guy ate sand. Genuinely concerned. And uh, my number three favorite moment in this movie is just H.I. and Edwina getting that speech from Nathan, Arizona, telling him, hey, man, maybe you shouldn't actually break up because even though you kidnapped my child... I see that there's good in you. That is insane. <laughs> but that is an, an insane moment that just totally gives you, you know what? Maybe humanity does have some hope. Maybe I can't actually believe in people. Tears welled up. They really did today. They welled up when that speech shot. It's so crazy. But and this movie has heart, too. Moment. And that's there hard. Is, it's such a beautiful uh, idea that these people can just steal your child, bring them back, and then you actually give them a moment to hang out with them and don't call the cops on them because you realize, well, damn, these people just wanted something to love. And I and I went through that. Mm-hmm. We were trying like hell. And I went through that, too. So instead mm-hmm. of me throwing the book at them legally, which I am totally within my rights to do, I'm going to say, you know what? Don't get divorced. Keep doing the horizontal mambo. And eventually a baby might come out. And that Cause joke, I'm in, cause I'm... it caught up to us. And boy, did it catch up to us. <laughs> <laughs> you know it did uh i would also like to give a shout out to leonard smalls who smokes backwards it seems because i did not smoke backwards the way he did wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> and that's all i want to say about that and uh i would just like to point out that the reason why movies look like they do and the way mo- comedies are the way they are today I can trace it back to this movie in the same way that the dialogue in action movies changed after Aliens and Die Hard. Mm -hmm. This is one of the movies that changed the way dialogue is in quote unquote Americana type films where people are not from either California or New York. This is how Americans sound. This is one of the movies that define that and the way that comedy should look in a weird Tex Avery Warner Brothers Looney Tunes vibe. This movie brings that to the table, man. If you didn't, if you've never seen Raised in Arizona, get your ass to Moss. It's time to watch this now. It's a uh, brilliant movie. So good. I, I, I think my one of my things is I love when Holly Hunter just goes, I love him so much. She just busts out in that car. That's hard. She's, she's like, been holding that in for years. Yeah. That, that's not <laughs> that's not easy to act. That comes out of nowhere. Just mm-hmm. nowhere where she busts that out. And there's mm-hmm. her son of a bitch. That son of a bitch. That son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, they, want, they wanted her specifically for this. And I got to write fart. I got to bring up the fart moment. I fart. Lo- absolutely love that. I love the Dr. Spock's gag with the baby book that just keeps getting grabbed from person to person. Everyone, every, we, babies need instructions, bro. Yep. Babies oh, need man. instructions. All right. So then, let's see. I got that. And then, oh, man, there's so many things here. Um, I mean, the little baby Yodas. That's, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when he's talking about Leonard Smalls yeah. at the end, and he goes, he kind of dresses like a rock star. <laughs> yeah, I, he dresses. I don't know why that's so funny, but I just, I just, that's hilarious. He kind of dresses for like all, a rock star. For all you kids listening to the podcast, if you Google 80s rock star, you will find that he's pretty close to accurate. He's dressed like a hairband dude mixed with a Fist of the North Star villain who's just wearing those football pads for no reason. But... He was also a football player. He's also dead, by the way, that guy. Boxer, Forget too. And he was in Ernest yeah. Goes to Jail. He's insane. And and he was like one of those people like uh, Billy from Predator. Like, he was crazy in real life, too. The Cohen brothers said he was less of a person and more of a force of nature. 
Yeah, pretty much. The, 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 I don't think they want to work with him again. So they. Uh, uh, his character used a grenade to murder a bunny rabbit. So, <sighs> yeah, dark beautiful. guy. Beautiful. Dark guy. Well, I'm glad you brought this up, man. It kind of rekindled my love of this film. It, oh, man, I love this movie. So I'm glad that we nope. got to fawn over it. I'm, we did a lot more than fawn over it because this could have been my top 200 moments from Raising Arizona. Yeah. <laughs> Number 200. This number one one hundred ninety nine. That oh man, the movie's deeper than that, man. The movie the movie is a standard bearer mm-hmm. for the way comedies should look and the speed at the jokes, the speed of the jokes, the way it should progress, and the fact that this is not a laugh track movie. Mm-mm. This is a movie where if you're paying attention, you can't just put this movie on in a background. In other words, no, you can't. No, there's so much, and you'd be doing a disservice. I think after you've given it a close watch. Then it's yeah. a perfect background watch. But it's, it's not long. Yeah. This it's... hot fuzz. And you know what I like, too? I like hot fuzz, but it just goes through the standard tropes on purpose. It plays with the tropes on purpose. But it's, it's still... being ironic. Yeah. Being, quote, unquote, ironic, yeah. But it still yeah. follows all those tropes that you're just like, oh, yeah, he's going to leave. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one doesn't really have that. So they steal the baby. No cops ever chase them with the baby. They don't drive off a cliff together. They're not holding hands. They are having a nice existence. They, uh, there's no, his friends take the baby, but then the that's treated so they start loving the baby, and then the other guy gets the baby. But it's not there's this movie flies by because it's it not does. there's so much drama action. It's fun. It's great. It's it's rewatchable, but it also just doesn't have. It, that's why it's so rewatchable. I think it's yeah, just it's yeah. Char- it's character driven. It's not plot driven. And when that chase for the diapers happens in the middle it's a pleasant surprise Mm -hmm. because it's absurd and the fact that the guy who hits him with a truck during that car chase doesn't drive off but lets him actually get in the car and helps him out yeah like it's just there 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 is a whole other class of human being that exists in this movie man everyone is generally good and and then even hi in his constant struggles He's got he's got some small beefs with the government too, man. You know he does, yeah. Says straight up, it wasn't easy with that son of a bitch Reagan in the White House. You know they say he's a decent man, but I don't know. Maybe his advisors are confused. Like they take little jabs at the government <laughs> yeah. all the time. You know he gets his paycheck at the end of the week. Taxes sure do take a bite, doesn't she? <laughs> Just all these little things that give you the sense that it's not that this dude has not been trying. Mm-hmm. He is trying, but he cannot get over the hump no matter what he does. Just, quote-unquote, forces conspire against him. So and good. so he's trying to live. It's a brilliant movie, man. And this is one of my top five Cage performances, too, I would say. Uh, I don't know if I could put together a list right now, but, I mean, top of my head, Adaptation. Okay. Uh, let's see. Adaptation, this. Let me, let me – uh, so Adaptation, Raising Arizona – yeah, I love him in Mandy, but I don't know how much Mandy like that's more style. I don't know how much that is of his performance. Okay, uh, or I'll do this real quick. Uh, let's see, he's good in Joe too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans, National Treasure, because <laughs> he really reigns it in. And is that five? And I got four? one left. I mean, I think you know what I like about his character in Con Air is yes, he he doesn't have to fight those guys and he kills them. He doesn't have to kill them. No. And then when he's on the on the plane, that, that guy's like, what are you looking at, country boy? He's like, well, I'm, I'm admiring your cage. Like, he just, he's talking shit to all these, like, he doesn't, and remember the guard? He's like, yeah, that absolutely. guard, he's like, I'm going to get that picture back from you. And he's going to do yeah, it. Totally. Like, yes, he, he will. He's got it's a very a interesting, oh, oh, wild at heart. Well, okay. Moonstruck. I, I, okay, I got my list. I got my list, bro. It is this movie, mm-hmm. and in a controversial bid, the sequel to Ghost Rider. Uh, oh. I am going face off, and then I'm going leave in Las Vegas, and finally, uh, I think the movie's it's either eight millimeter or or Snake Eyes. Well, so there's one both. Them. He's one, the eight millimeters we're watching tape, and then the Vegas ones, the De Palma, where he's at the boxing match. Okay, I am going. Remember, he finds that snuff film. Yes. Okay, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. The one with the snuff film, eight millimeter. Uh, and I Valley, he's really good in Valley Girl. You like that eight millimeter? It was because it was just it was I, I I was in a place where I need. <laughs> Remember he does that. I, yeah, exactly. He bites yeah. His <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's when he was just full. Nick, okay, Nick, ready, ready. You're appalled and action. Oh, 
I'm all knuckle eating <laughs> in that exactly. movie. Knuckle eating, exactly. That's why I'm there because that is Nicolas Cage almost going full Nicolas Cage, Ooh, but kick, there's still got 